Okay, hello and welcome to the next episode of Let's Talk Brand. This is the first in Poland series of interviews with world-class branding experts. And uh, today we are almost 16,000 kilometers from Poland in Sydney, Australia, uh, to interview Richard Sauerman, the brand guy. Uh, he is acknowledged as a global brand guru on the top 30 global gurus list and is ranked number four in the world uh, in 2020. Uh, he co-runs uh, a brand strategy and design and communication company called Brandcraft. Uh, he also uh, delivers interactive workshops and keynote talks for in-house projects and at conferences and seminars across Australia as well as abroad. Um, he was working in the multinational uh, ad agencies such as Sachi and Sachi in London, Ogilvy and Matter, DDB, McCann, Ericsson. And he did the strategic thinking and brand planning for some of the world's most iconic brands and companies, for example, Coca Cola, Microsoft, Nestle, Unilever, Johnson and Johnson, and Levis. Uh, he also believes everyone has potential that extends far beyond their actual day to day performance. Uh, I hope this is all correct, uh, Richard. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Welcome to Poland. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Good to be here. Okay. And uh, today, and, and surprisingly, uh, we are going to talk about the brand. So let's talk brand. And uh, yep. I have my, my, my own mission uh, to simplify all these complicated theories. Uh, I want to help startups, small and medium companies to stand out um on this uh, overcrowded market um, at, at the beginning so let, let's focus on something good uh what positive changes um the coronavirus pandemic uh, has brought there's a lot of negative talk uh, but let's let's try to focus on something positive well i i think the biggest well i don't know if it's a change yet but there's a realization and I think the realization is it's, it's you can't live in this life and be in this world just for yourself because you won't survive. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're all in it together. And if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. You know, it's that. And if you want to turn the tide, you have to jump into the water. You can't stand there and watch and commentate. You have to be in doing your bit you know, etc. Not because you'll get fined, because yeah, you will get fined, but because it's the right and it's the decent thing to do. And now, will that be forgotten in a year's time? <laughs> Maybe, you know, like I, I'm an idealist and so I say not. You know, there will be some lasting legacy of that to remind us of what it is to actually be a really great human being. And it's not about you, it's about being there for others. And the thing is, when you, when you live a life where you are fundamentally there for others, that is how you find happiness. That is how you have happiness in your life, by living, by giving for not just you, but beyond you. And that's, you know, positive psychology, Martin Seligman, authentic happiness. That's, that's the big finding. That's the finding. When you start behaving and living your life in that way, uh, they call that the meaningful life. And, uh, and that's when you, you know, you become happy and, and there's, you can have a lot of money, but it won't make any difference. You will still get COVID. You can be a very important person. It won't make any difference. You will still get COVID. And the people we admire most are the cleaners and the nurses. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of shaking up the order, challenging how we see things, how we see people who's good, who's not good, who's important, who isn't important. And I think there's been quite an awakening in a positive way in the, around that space. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, but, but you mean globally, not in your country or in your no, city. Globally. 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 I can't speak for what's happening in Poland, but that would be my sense. That would be my kind of prediction. I think it's a human thing. It's not just an Australian thing. It's a human thing. We've all learned the same lesson. You know, right. really, yeah, I think so. Okay, so uh, 
we can actually jump to the, to the question because I was about to quest, ask you about how to find the right purpose um, because many companies struggle to find the reason uh, for their existence. Uh, I see many companies that they rather exist than live. Uh, yeah, for me, it's like uh, with humans. Uh, you can just exist because you were born uh, or, or you can live uh, your life. Uh, you can uh, walk your path. You can have goals. Uh, you, 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 you may want to change something. And uh, I see many companies struggle to find the right uh, reason, the right purpose uh, for their existence and how to do this. <sighs> Well, it's interesting, the whole, I mean, I, so Simon Sinek, you know Simon Sinek? So he got the three circles where what you do, how you do it, why you do it. It starts with why, it starts with your purpose. So I left advertising, my last job, to brand in this way. Because if you do, if you do branding and advertising, you make ads. You're not having conversations with the company about why they exist. You're talking to the marketing director. If you want to have a why conversation, you have that conversation. It's the CEO, you know, him and her, and, and 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 their team, the executive team, you know. And that's what I like to do. That's why I moved out of advertising. I said branding can lead to advertising, but branding starts with the whole leadership team. And the first question is, <laughs> apart from making money, because obviously if you're any good as a business, you make money. Okay, that's cool, granted, but why do we exist? What's our contribution to the world, to life, to the planet? What's our con why should people come and work for us on a Monday morning feeling excited and energized? Why should people buy our products and our services, you know, and continue buying? You know, what, what's, the, what's the deep reason? And so the way I find that out is I have, I, I go to the leaders. You know, I don't do research. I don't go out there and ask, you know, what do you, it's like, no, man. You are in the company, you tell me what, what the purpose is. You know, and it's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna, you know, like we're talking about that. It, it's, it's a sort of, you know, it's not gonna change dramatically, you know, because these new leaders or something. Yeah, the purpose is the purpose and, the, you know, it kind of hangs around. And, and, and so I had this conversation with them and I call it, so it, it might be on a Monday morning at nine o'clock, but I call it the red wine midnight conversation, <laughs> okay? And I walk in with my T-shirt and my jeans, like deliberately, because this is a casual chat, you know? And so they'll talk about all the business stuff and, you know, all the things they have to, you know, that's in their head. And then I start asking about, so, you know, when you were a young person, uh, uh, you know, going through business school and university and getting your degree, did you dream of working in insurance? You know, because I'm talking to an insurance company. And they go, oh, God, no. Oh, no, insurance is terrible, you know. So I said, okay, well, you know, that's a bit unfortunate because this is an insurance brand. So, so what was the dream? I mean, what's it all about for you? And that's how I like to start the conversation. You know, well, you know, maybe you've forgotten. You know, maybe you need to take yourself back to when you were 18, 19 and, but you know a bit idealistic maybe like what was it all about you know and then and then that's the red wine midnight conversation yeah and uh and, and i have this conversation with people who are actuarists who are economists or the most left brain people like you and some of them are like well like what, what are you what are you asking me you know <laughs> and then i say and i say well go back to when you were 18 or 19 you know remember that feeling when you were yeah 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 you know, you were a young scientist studying science. You know, what was the dream? You know, do you want to be working for BHP as a scientist making millions of dollars? Or do you want to be working for the CSIRO, you know, saving the world from climate change? I mean, where where do you see yourself and what's, you know, et cetera. And then through that conversation, you kind of link that to the company, the profession, the industry they work in. You know, what's the role of insurance as an industry to the world? You know, and insurance is a wonderful enabler. You know, without insurance, you know, things just don't happen. You know, risks don't get taken. And uh, it's actually a really cool thing. And then we're, so that's kind of nice. That's part of our purpose here. Like, yeah, we make the world happen. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that, and you kind of drill it down and drill it down. And then you get to a thing. And, and the point is, it's not about being original. It's about being true 
And when I speak to like the eight or 10 people on the executive team and I have that conversation, they might say it in different ways, but you can see straight away what it is they all have in common. You know, even if some are not quite there, you go, that's it. Because some really struggle. And then you go, that's what your purpose is. And then somebody used a phrase in one of the conversations that I had, and, and it's a beautiful phrase, and I've written that down, and then, you know what I mean? It's there, you know? So it's in their language, and it's what they say, and I write it down. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I just take little notes. So I've got a big pad, I have little notes. And I'm, it's like I'm building this little model, and I need the pieces for the model. The model is, uh, you know, <laughs> Is that output, you know, what, what it's going to be? This is our purpose. And, and from there, everything's going to fall. Yeah. And I'm looking for these little bits and pieces. And then I kind of add some clay here and shape it up, you know. And then what they get is a purpose that is resonates with them in the heart. But you see, it's a lot of companies, when they try and write these things, they write it in a way that it makes sense, you know, so our purpose, you know, some rational kind of sensible thing or, or some kind of a statement that, you know, something like, let's say that they'll write our purpose is uh, to be the imagination for tomorrow. You know, it's like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's sort of, you can rationalize that, but what does that mean? <laughs> you know, the purpose has to be written in a fundamentally understandable human way like you're having a red wine midnight conversation. So that's the first thing. Now you've got it. So when you present it and you, and you share it with people, if it's written the right way, people go, oh, that's cool, man. Oh, that's, I know what that means. I know what, I, I know what I'm signing up to. I know how I need to behave and what sort of a person I need to be to work at this company. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to, you know, the imagination tomorrow. It's like, yeah, well, that's a really clever little thing, but what does that mean? You know? So I'm very big on also simplifying the branding. You know, you simplify it. You talk to the people around the company, have a real human conversation with them about their purpose, and uh, and then you and then you capture it in a real conversational way. You know, not some you know advertising copy wank. You know, that's been spun and it's like, oh, what does that mean? You know. So that, that's kind of how I do it. But it, but I think, and that's easy enough. But then, then it's making it real. You know what I mean? Like now, you know, and so I like to take that, and that drives kind of everything, the whole spirit, the ethos, the values, the behaviors, all links to that, you know, in, in, in a nice sort of, in a nice way. And, and, and so should everything, you know, their products, their services. Um, I mean, and I think there's a whole element of truth in here as well. You know, you can't bullshit. You know, you, you, McCann Erickson was never a great, creative or strategy agency, but they, McCann Eric has got a motto and the motto is truth well told. And that's the one thing I learned working there. You know, just, you can't, there was a time where you could say anything, you know what I mean? Back in the seventies and the eighties and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to find the truth. What is the truth here? And then tell it in a way that's compelling, you know, and that's what advertising should do. And that's what your purpose should be about and all those kinds of things, you know, so. I think it's going to be based on, you, know, you can't just make something up that's completely not true because it's just, you know, those days are long gone, you know. So it's something hand on heart, yep, we're going to commit to this. Um, but, you know, when you have the conversation, you see, you know, you can see in people's eyes and their body language, you know, when they start to talk in like they're having the red wine, you know, the red wine midnight conversation that we all know and have, you know, and we drop our guard a bit. And we say what we really think, and we speak a lot, from, a lot more from the heart than usually, and, and that's a good conversation, you know, to have. Okay, so uh, when the um, employees do not understand what, why they are doing what they are doing, so um, they actually they, they can hate their job uh, because they don't understand what they are going to change uh, in a customers' lives, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you see, you can come. I, you can come, like, I've got this thing. You can come to work and just do a little shitty job, you know? So it's, it's like the story of, 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 of there's, there's three builders, yeah, with bricks. And somebody walks along and he says to the first builder, what are you doing? And he says, I'm laying bricks. And he says, okay. And he says to the second builder, what are you doing? And he says, I'm building a wall. 
Okay, so bigger picture, you know. Uh, uh. And he asked the third builder, and he said, I'm building a cathedral <laughs> to the glory of God, you know. You know what I'm saying? So it's like everybody has, uh, the way I break it down is everybody has in their day, you have, Lucas, you have a list of things that you hate doing and a list of things that you like doing, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like for most people, the, the list of things I hate doing is a longer list, yeah? So we spend most of our days doing things mostly that we don't like doing, you know what I'm saying, yeah? Unless, unless you've got that, that other reference point, which is the purpose, you know? Yes, I have to come into this building and I work for NASA and my job is to sweep the floor at NASA. What a shit job, I'm a floor sweeper. No, what an awesome job. I'm part of the team, man. We just landed a rocket on Mars, you know? <laughs> so suddenly, being a sweeper, I'm a sweeper on that team, part of that mission, and it changes the whole thing. And it's really, really very, very important. And that's why, you know, employee engagement, staff engagement numbers around the world are so low. You know, Gallup, is the global eminent source and they report the engagement survey every year. And I think the global average is about 25% or even a bit less, 24% are engaged people. I mean, that's one in four. That's like, you know, out of every four people that turn up on a Monday morning, one of them is excited to be there. <laughs> Why? Where's the, where the problem? How, how to yeah, make well, employees that, love their company and uh, keep them engaged? No, well, I, I think the I think the pro there's I think there's a from a brand lens and from my perspective, I would say the problem is you do not have a purpose. You don't have a reason for these people to come in. They are turning up to to your to to, to work to pay their telephone bills. <laughs> you know that is not a good motivation for working. They're turning up because they have to, not because they want to, because they're contributing towards something. People naturally want to contribute towards things, you know, that are making a difference to the lives of others. I mean, that's naturally. So if you could offer that in some shape or form, put it out there, it's in your advertising, it's in your company culture, it's the way you behave and treat people, it's the, you know, all that, your ethics, your governance, your compliance, you know, then people go, great, you know. But I think a lot of companies are not doing that very well. And they're not doing it very effectively. And so, you know, the uh, the blue collar factory, you know, which used to be the old factory back in the days, the old blue collar factory, and we've all moved to become white collar workers, has now become a white collar factory. You know, like, so it's another form of factory labor. And I don't know, if I sit in Sydney <coughs> on a Monday morning, sometimes having a coffee and a vape outside before a meeting and it's half past eight and I'm just watching, you know, the vibe and the crowd and the whole thing. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of happy, excited people, you know? It's like, oh, shit, man, what's... Like, yeah, it's Monday morning, I know, but I mean, you know, what, what are you going to write off Mondays? That's Mondays are one-seventh of your life. You know, so the problem here is, 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 you know, it's not good for business that people aren't engaged, obviously, you know, all the numbers around that and how that affects productivity and turnover and all those kinds of things. But to me, also, more importantly, it's bad for those people. <laughs> it's shit for your life. If you're spending, you know, you know, like most of your life, five days out of seven working in the office and you fundamentally are either not engaged or actively disengaged. So together has three categories. They have engaged, not engaged, and actively disengaged, yeah? So engaged is every, so let's say engaged is 20%. Then of the remaining 80%, half of them, 40%, are actively disengaged. They are actively working against you. You know, it's like, it's not, and this is where I think branding has a massive role to play. You know, you have the conversation with the leaders, you, you get the story right, you get it right, but it's not just a story. There are proof points across the business, the way they serve customers, the kind of products they make. That make no, this is legit. You know, every company has that, that greater purpose. You just got to dig it, find it, there it is. 
uh, you know, it obviously sits within some kind of a category space. And then what's our truth, you know? And uh, yeah, but I, it's just not done, man. You know, I, I've done it. I've done it. Um, I did it for QBE globally. Okay. And that, you know, they got 16 and a half thousand people. So it's a big Australian company. It's the biggest job I've done like that. And I know it flew for a while. I know that because I saw it. And, but I think now I see like the signs of it are still there. You know, when I see <laughs> just the spirit and it needs, maybe it needs to be revisited again. You know, this was about seven, eight years ago. So maybe that's something one has to do. You've got to keep breathing kind of new life into it, new commitment. Because I think it's five to seven years in any company, probably most of the people have gone, you know. I mean, the CEO has gone, but, you know, most people, by seven years, they are pretty much 100% turnover, you know. So maybe that's the time to then kind of reset. But then you get a new CEO and he or she doesn't believe in that rubbish. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, so, you know. So, so I, as I understand, the employees should come to work, not just to work, but to change something. Hmm. They, should, they, should, they should understand deeply what they want to change in the human's life. To uh, make so a contribution. Yeah, not change, but make a contribution towards a greater good, you know, not just paying, their, not just earning money for themselves. We all need to earn money to live, but if you are coming into work, and there's that greater sense of you are contributing towards stuff. You know, this is this is the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is self-actualization. When you rise above your ego and you rise above your materialistic needs, and of course I'm surviving and I've got food and I've got a roof, you know, we take all that for granted now. So now you're reaching, you know, I believe everybody naturally has that wire in them. And so I believe that completely. And even people say, oh, mate, that's bullshit. You know, I just go, no, nah, it's not. <laughs> you look in your heart, you know it's true, you know. And uh, and so when I come and do the branding, I assume that everyone is just ready and waiting for this message, you know. <laughs> and so it's an easy sell. It's like, and here it is. And they all go, oh, bloody great, you know, fantastic. But then the next thing I say is, okay, so what are you going to do? <laughs> And what are you going to do? And what are you going to do? Because the company is not going to make this happen. You know, companies don't make things happen. People do, you know, starting with the leader and the leadership team. But every person needs to own a piece of that. So in your role, in your job, you know, here's our purpose. These are the values that we believe in and the behaviors. And so, what, you know, you're going to sign up for this. And you're going to start doing it every day because you can't sit back and watch it. Because, you know, this is it's on all of us. So there's a responsibility there. But if it's done well, then that responsibility is taken on board. If people like what they're seeing and they go, this is awesome. Like, like if I present a brand to a group, to a company, usually when I do the brand strategy, I get asked to present it, which is to all the staff, which is kind of awkward because it should be the CEO. But sometimes the CEO can't present. They just shit, you know. So I get to kind of do it, yeah? And then they'll do an introduction and stuff. And when I do it, I say, so this brand strategy, it's got nothing to do with the company. This is about you. This is being created for you for the five days a week that you work here. We want you to have an awesome time and we want you to be happy and flourishing. And we hope that this brand strategy is gonna help you do that. You're gonna do your little bit at the end and tell us how you're gonna contribute you know, so in other words, this is all about you. It's not about the company. And when you start to frame it like that, people are like, bring it on. People are keen. You know, they want that. No one's going, nah, I don't want that. What, you want to go back to boring Mondays? Like, who wants that? <laughs> so uh, when we talk about this uh, engagement crisis, uh, uh, let's say, so it, it means uh, that most of the companies fail if it's about branding and brand building. Uh, if there is this kind of an uh, engagement crisis. And, um, so, okay, so now let's focus on something bad <laughs> if we're talking about the engagement crisis. And, um, and uh, this is a cliche that the market is overcrowded um, because there's a noise in every, every category. Um, it's not easy actually to stand out. Um, so if we can point uh, what um, mistakes uh, do entrepreneurs make 
what they forget. Well, <laughs> I think I think the art of standing out has been long forgotten. Okay, there, there are a few. Re the first overall social reason is political correctness. Yeah, you say anything that's a bit different, or in, the, in uh, anybody else, you get called for being, oh, that's inappropriate, or that's wrong, or you know, I'm offended by that. It's like, really? Are you? Well, so what? You know? But you know what I'm saying. So that's the that's just in people's attitudes, you know. So you know, the people who the brand owners, the marketers, that's how they think as well. You're not gonna put anything in there that oh, might play be safe, play safe. Oh, play super safe, play super safe, yeah. The next thing is the name of the game is they want to be liked by everybody. So because if you go out there and you want every single person in the world to like you. You will dumb yourself down to a certain level of universal acceptance. Whereas if you go out there as Lucas, yeah, with your glasses and your beard and behaving your way, you might upset some people with your views, you know, or whatever. But you don't care because you being Lucas and you just being yourself. In other words, you are standing out. You're not standing out just because you can. You're standing out because that's who you are and you being yourself, which means you stand out, you know, and that's that's up. And that's what brands need to do, but they don't. You know, they do all this research and they do all this stuff and they try and find, you know, like, like the same way the politicians do, you know, where they run all these polls and they will, what do people want me to say? What do people want to hear? And then that's what they start saying. It's like, dude, stand for something. And brands do the same thing. The great brands stand for stuff. They're, and they've always done that and they stick to it. Often brands don't, though, they don't get it right. But these days, when you say stand for something, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, stand for something meant like in a marketing sense I'm talking about now, meant, you know, that you're, you're advertising on TV, your outdoor, your radio, your print, your newspaper was all kind of off the same, you know, same creative, same campaign, you're on brief, you know, whereas now it's everything, you know, all the digital shit, you know, that you bring out, you know, it's hard, like, when you're running an Instagram page, you know, to every, you know, every post, everything, you know, you really got to keep at it. You know, it takes a lot of work to, to consistently stand for the right things anyway, you know. But I think you can stand for something without standing for just the same thing. I mean, there's, you, there's, a, there's a great, there's a great um, metaphor. This is, the, this is about what you want to stand for, okay. And and this is this is the trap that people fall into. So there's two hawks that are flying like a mile up from the ground, you know, like eagles, yeah? And and uh, the one is short-sighted and the other one has got beautiful vision. So the one with really good vision uh, has a very specific idea of what it eats and it's mice. And it can spot a mouse, yeah? Boom, there it is, okay? <laughs> Here you go, boom. The other hawk is short-sighted. So it is looking for small brown things that move. Okay, mice, frogs, snakes, little locusts, toads. Okay, now small brown things have moved. That's what you want to stand for as a brand. If you stand for mice, it might work really well in Poland for 2021. What do you do in France? What do you do in Argentina? And what do you do in five years' time? Like, where's the flexibility, you know? And mice might be a very nice brand TV commercial. Okay, so how do you put that now on uh, Instagram? And how, what do you do when you do an outdoor poster? And sometimes you see people do this and they take like a frozen frame from the commercial and they use that as the poster, you know, what, you know, as the outdoor, because they haven't really got an idea. The idea is small brown things have moved. There's our TV execution. There's our poster execution. There's our digital execution, you know, and it has to be small brown things that move. It can't be small brown things. You know, if the hawk is trying to live off small brown things, it's trying to eat rocks and it will die. <laughs> okay? So it can't be too vague and diffuse and broad. We can't just stand for, you know, world goodness. It's like, no, 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 no. That's too vague. You, you've got to, it's got to be an idea, you know. So like Coca-Cola, happiness in a bottle. Oh, you know, there's not happiness, but it's happiness in a bottle. 
Which bottle? The only one, Coca-Cola. <laughs> you know, and now that, oh, that'll last you for 20 years, man, at least. And the stuff you can do with that, oh, there's all kinds of happiness and different experiences. And, you know, it's really beautiful and very clever. So that's that standing for something. But for the Coca-Cola company to stand for happiness in a bottle, it needs to be a happy place to work. <laughs> and you know what? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked on Coca-Cola, when I first started working on Coca-Cola, and I grew up on Coca-Cola. It was a, I love the brand. I love the drink and all that. And now today I drink, I drink Diet Coke. But as a kid, you know, it was one of my brands. And when I first started working for them, I was so depressed at how serious and tense and horrible and nasty they all were. I was like, what the hell? This isn't Coca-Cola. Like I was fully expecting the company to be, yeah, a bit funky and kind of young and relaxed and fun and, Oh, no, man. It was really serious. So there was a massive disconnect for me. I'm like, oh, just, you know, that's really interesting. So there's that whole argument about aligning who you are as a company with your consumer brands. And uh, like Unilever have this problem, you know, because Unilever, <laughs> Unilever have got, so they've got Dove, yeah? And Dove stands for real beauty, yeah? Does it not, you know? And that's what they stand for. And they've stood for that for 15 years and they just the most amazing campaigns have come out of that it's not a very original idea you know beauty comes from within yeah no shit you know and they've done really good work around it and so that's it but then they've got links <laughs> and links is like the links effect with all these young guys spraying links you know and with all these beautiful models <laughs> you know just wanting to sleep with them you know, it's like basically use links and you will get laid by the hottest girl in the bar, you know. Now, <laughs> how does that sit with real beauty? You know what I'm saying? They quite, these are two brands in their portfolio that stand for these things. And they're great. You know, what he stands for is like, yeah, you know, go for it. <laughs> but when you put them in the Unilever family, you know, it's kind of a, oh, so what do Unilever actually believe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's quite interesting. Uh, quite an interesting kind of dilemma about what do you, what do you stand for and what do your brand stand for, and 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 is there a contradiction there? And and if there is, can you get away with it? And I think Unilever probably can. I mean, they are you know a pretty amazing company. They've built you know some of the greatest brands ever. You know, and like okay, good on you guys. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> When now, when now I think about my own brand, actually personal brand at, at, at the moment, uh, now I think that I should let some people hate me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, and I yeah. think about, about this way. Yeah. Who is going to hate me and why? You know what? So, so I do speaking, yeah, motivational speaking, yeah, and then and then and then you get the feedback after your talk, and and when if so if I used to get feedback, there's a hundred people. And 99 said, oh, we loved it. And one person would say, oh, it was shit, you know? I used to get really upset. Oh, what, what, why? I mean, then why didn't I please that one person? Now I know if I don't piss off at least 10 people, at least 10 people, I have not done a good job. Yeah, because I really be myself. I swear a bit. Uh, I get a bit carried away. I get a bit passionate. Some people find it a bit much, you know, all the politically correct ones. And honestly, I don't give a fuck, and they know that. So they score me badly, and they go me. But I take pride in that, just like you said now. You've got to have the haters, because that means you've actually been true. To, you've been a 10 out of 10. You've given it your shot. You, you haven't, you know, pussied out or compromised on anything. And that's what it's about. You may love it or hate it. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. In other words, okay. but, but if you apply that to brands, you know, so like it's quite a brave decision for a brand to say we are going to take a position on things and we might lose some customers because of that, you know. Um, but you have to do that, you know, to try and be all things to all people. A, you just lose credibility. B, you stand for nothing. You know, you try and stand, you know, stand, try and stand for everything. You end up standing for nothing. So you kind of have to do that, you know. You have to take a position on stuff. And I think some some brands, Airbnb, took a position when Trump was banning immigrants 
from coming to America and they put up people, you know, so a few come and people say, oh, you know, brands shouldn't get involved in politics. No, it's not. Airbnb provides accommodation. These people are on the streets in the fucking America because of Donald Trump and they're just doing the right thing, you know. I mean, if they didn't do accommodation, they wouldn't be doing it, you know. Of course, brands have a role in our lives and in society. And I fully support that as well, you know. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. I mean, brands are everything, Lucas. You know, the stock market and the irrational exuberance and the way people buy and don't buy. And it doesn't make sense, you know. And that's what's so interesting about it. And, and that's what I like about brands. And, you know, you've quoted that example I like to give. You know, you can buy a pair of diesels for 400 bucks or you can buy four pairs of Levi's for 100 bucks each. You know, you get four, four pairs of jeans. They've both got buckets of, you know, belt things. They've got, I mean, like I was saying, what's the deal, you know? You can't explain that. And that's why I don't think, you know, people try and measure branding and they try and quantify it. They try and make it a science. And a lot of brand strategists have that approach, very research driven and making it a science and focus groups and tweaking. And it's like bullshit, man. You know, like, sorry, I, I'm of the other school. You know, I, I just, I go much more on the gut. I think my, my radar's up. I see what's going on, you know, like half past eight in the Monday morning in the city. I watch, I see what's going on. I feel the vibe and, you know, and, and I just read it, you know, and I read stuff and know what's going on in the world and, and just go like that. I think that's the way to do it, you know, and it's about truthful, honest conversations. And yeah, it's stripping it off that, you know, branding is this, oh, what's your model and what's your, it's like, oh, God's sake, man, you know. <laughs> it's, if, you, and if you work in advertising and you work in the branding or the strategy department, it's like, oh, the brains are over there, you know, and it's like, oh, and it's like, oh, it's nonsense, you know. So I've always been on this mission to kind of bring it down like you have and demystify it and make it accessible to everyone, especially small and medium business owners who want to build their own brands, you know. Have, have you ever thought of doing a course on that? Sorry. Um, have you thought of doing a course on branding, a, a, a branding your small business course? Um, actually, I'm, I'm not understand. I'm not sure if I understand your question about um, what I do with small and startups uh, companies. No, I, your course. Have you done I a course? workshops and keynotes for them, and just prepare and ebooks, especially for for small companies, so they understand clearly what's uh, what's their actually what what they should do and how they should do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of books on the market. Yeah, I know. Have, have, you, have you ever made a... There's no, there's no re recipe how to do it well. And, and I, 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 I... Actually, this is, this is something strange because this is uh, quite rational and we, we, we all understand that uh, we should have a purpose, we should contribute to something, uh, we should be different in some way, but still there, there, now we have lots of imitation Lots of cliches like um, we have a good quality, uh, we have a good price, we have a fantastic team of employees. Every company says actually the same. And uh, I, I, I still wonder and I cannot understand why they are doing this. And I try to help uh, small companies and startups to understand. Uh, yeah. uh, because to understand that they should help their clients to see the difference between them and their competitors so yeah. they can make a choice yeah i think a lot of advertising agencies do not do a very good job at positioning themselves you know if you do a survey of all of them you're right and what they say and what they promise and and take the logos off it all looks the same <laughs> i must say uh, it's quite interesting that yeah it's, it's quite have you made or thought of making like like a video course? You know, ten no, episodes. No, 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 okay, not yet. Not because yet. I, I thought of doing that. So I, I thought exactly like you. I thought because I get I was get approached a lot by smaller businesses, yeah, and, and they can't afford me. Some of them can, and so I just charge a nominal amount. And and some I say no, sorry, but some I help. So I do pro bono, yeah. I, quite a, I helped quite a few people during COVID when I didn't have much work at all, to be honest. So there was a local cattery business and someone else. So I helped them and, you know, that kind of is what you do in that. But I kind of was like, yeah, you should do a how to brand your business 
you know, start off, you know, for me, it starts off with why, have a red wine midnight conversation, look at your purpose, you know, da, 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 that's the first video, you know, and there's 10 of them, and here's the course, and you pay 89 bucks, you know, or $79, and uh, I've just never done it, but I was kind of, uh, I think it might work pretty well. What do you reckon? It's actually, actually, I, I love to work, because I, I used to work with the big companies as well, uh, but I, I really love to work with one, two-person companies because the people are highly motivated and they really want to change something and they really understand uh, what what their problem is. And so that's why now I focus only on the small companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, very, they're very clear on what they are. Uh, there, there is no online, or online, good online course for the small companies. There is no good book for the small companies. And I see they are very, very open uh, for for. for for this kind of job, so yeah. um, so so the online course probably yes at the end of this year. Uh, what I want to do more is to bring all wonderful uh, experts like you and the other uh, who I interview to Poland to do yeah. something on online for the uh, for the Polish entrepreneurs to change something on this market okay. uh, because it, it, it was surprising that uh, no one ever before. Uh, try to ask you or Martini Meyer or David Pryor how to do it in a good way, how to do the branding. And yeah, yeah. So well, that was strange, actually. Well, I'll tell you what's strange is that, so I live in Australia, yeah, nobody, I, the Australian industry have never reached out to me like you have, ever. I mean, this is in Australia, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, because they think branding is still an advertising thing. They think if you're over 40, you're too old to work in advertising. And of course, I am now 60, so I'm way too old for them. And I just get, I'm just ignored. You know, like I'm on LinkedIn, there I am. Everyone can see my ranking. I've been in the world top 20 for fucking, I don't know, 30 for seven or eight years now in a row. The number goes up and down, but there I am. I, mean, must, I must have something to offer to say. Zero. You know, nothing. It doesn't bother me, but it's just like, it's just quite interesting. I think branding. The whole big thing here, it's all bloody digital, mate. Digital, digital, you know? We've got digital strategy, you know? We've got digital media and a digital credit. And digital, you know, you want to stand out and do great work and great thinking. Digital drives the opposite of that, you know, because I'm creating a thousand different executions that I'm testing A, B, C, D, E of different models and I'm finding the things that work best. And I'm, you know what I mean? It's all common denominator stuff. And who's good at that and who's good at using the data? It's all become about that. And I reckon, you know, for me, like considering that half half of the, the, the marketing advertising budgets are now all in digital. So that's half gone there, you know. And 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 and, and on the other half in above the line, I think they're still majorly focused on digital. Branding is just an afterthought, man. It, it's become a bit of an afterthought. It really has. And I think it's just and that's why no one wants to talk to branding people. That's why no one, and to me, it's like, it all starts with the brand. I mean, it all begins there. How can you, you know, not? And uh, and maybe that's old school, you know, but I don't think so. But still, but still and what, what I see entrepreneurs start with, with just pushing, with using social media and just pushing and pushing without thinking what to push exactly there, what the, the message should look like. <laughs> No, I know, and they kind of make it up a bit, and you know, and it's all. There's a lot of digital, digital creative agencies who reckon they can do branding, you know, and they. But I mean, they. I, I'm. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that. I don't know. I've been working with all of them, but I work with a few, and they are shocking. <laughs> I have no idea. <coughs> you know, most popular workshops. Um in Poland are about social media, how to use social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's right. And before, yeah, exactly. exactly. No, no. That's also something I want to change. So, so that's why I'm, I, I want to do the conference only about the branding and brand building, not about marketing, about branding and yeah. having more. But I mean, even if you're using social media, you know, like you want to have a sense of, you know, what is your brand? Okay, <laughs> you know, on social media, you know, how do you want it to be and what's going to serve, you know, so on Instagram, my Instagram, you know, all my thoughts, 
uh, you know, stuff that makes you think. It's linked to my motivational human condition, psychology, positive psychology. And that's what you get on my Instagram. Nothing about my private life. Nothing. It's not about that, yeah? And that kind of promotes that, and, and I want to be seen. Facebook is just for my friends and family. I've got like 100 followers, and I'll put up, you know, the odd funny thing and a photograph once or twice a month, and that's kind of that, you know? But I kind of got it worked out. I sort of know what the, the role of each what the role of each is. And when I'm putting a post on Facebook, I'm kind of slightly aware of who's seeing it. So I, it won't be too rude because, you know, my parents, my mother might not like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got it all kind of worked out. Then I got my Twitter. And my Twitter is my sort of, uh, I can go hard, my protest down with the government and all that shit, you know, all the politics, I'm right in there, fucking chopping away. Uh, because no one wants to see that on Instagram, I don't think. No one wants to see it on my Facebook, you know, unless it's something really, really big that I believe in that I'll put it on Facebook, you know. So in my head, it's all kind of worked out, you know. <laughs> and so I reckon everyone should do that, you know whether it's their business or themselves, just have some sense of, you know, what they're using, how they're using it, what it's for, because it's saying something about them. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to be judged by your Instagram, but that does happen. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what goes on. That's what people do most of the time on social media is they judge other people or they compare themselves to other people and go, oh, my God, my life is nowhere near as fun as yours. What's wrong with me? self scanning? <laughs> What's wrong with me? You know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Social media is a, is a you know, it can be a problem. So I think, yeah, social media can get out of control and have all sorts of negative uh, things. But I think if you, for yourself, have some awareness around your what your brand is and therefore how these social media things are, you know, fit within that, then to me it makes a little bit more sense. And you've kind of got an idea in your head about so it's not. A, you haven't got an Instagram brand guideline book for yourself. You know what I mean? It's just something that sits in your head and it's an awareness, you know, which I think is quite important. Yeah, uh, it's, all, it's all fine as, as long as you focus and you have your own voice. Mm. Uh, because what I see that people use trends, okay, we are using big phones and we are using frames and then everybody has a big phones and frames on the, yeah. on the, on the post. So. Yeah, yeah. Everyone looks the same, so, so that's the, the that's the, the still main yeah. problem. Is 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 TikTok quite big in Poland? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's cool on. There, there is some really funny stuff on TikTok. I gotta say, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good laugh. Facebook is just. We've had big problems with Facebook here in Australia. You know, they closed all the news, all the yes, news. I read. And they closed a lot of the charities and they chose government organization pages, you know, like bushfires and weather, you know, like dude, they close they they stuffed it up, okay. So they closed all these all these, you know, charities, you know, cancer for kid charities. I mean, it was just so embarrassing. So they put them up and now they've reached some new agreement with the government. So now the news sites are back on again. But um, I, I just don't feel good about Facebook as a brand anymore. It's, uh, there's a lot of ranting people on there. I, I don't, you know, I, I much prefer Instagram personally. I just find it a much more pleasant experience. It's just a lot of, um, a lot of uh, kind of hate speech and unnecessary speech and a lot of people being offended, you know, on Facebook. And it's like, oh, go away. <laughs> just go away, you know. It's quite interesting how that's really changed, I think. It's, uh, yeah. I just do it because my parents, my parents don't have anything else, and that's one way of them seeing photographs. And, you know, if I, if I dump my page, I'd be, my mother would be very upset. Uh, so maybe I'll wait until she dies before I do that. <laughs> but I'm going to dump them, for sure. <laughs> I don't like Mark Zuckerberg. I don't like him. He's the face, but he's the guy. I don't like his art. I don't like what he seems to be about. I don't know. He doesn't make me feel good, you know. You know, he does. Steve Jobs. I love Steve Jobs. Uh, Bill Gates. Love Bill Gates. Elon Musk. Love Elon Musk. <laughs> Mark Bezos. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Nah, nah. But he owns Instagram as well, doesn't he? Sorry. He owns Instagram as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like Rupert Murdoch, you know, he's an Australian media guy who owns, you know, <clears throat> Fox News and half of the world as well, you know.
that's the world. Okay, uh, Richard, um, um, if you would like to invite people to your channels, uh, please do this right now. Or, or maybe where can we follow you? Um, so, so uh, actually, what's, what's the easy thing to do is if you type well in Australia anyway. I, I'm not sure. I, I suppose we're the same in Poland. If you type in the brand guy in Google search, that's okay. okay. You just type. I, I, I'm going to check this, what, what's going to happen if I put the, the brand, brand guy in, in Poland. The brand. What's up, my bloody Facebook, my web page, my everything. Just the okay. brand guy. Capital, capital T. <laughs> okay, this the, 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 the second position, the brand guy, brand consultant in Sydney, Richard Sauerman. So, <laughs> so the, brand, the brand guy for the Polish Google is enough to find you on the second position here in Poland. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, we got. Yeah, okay, cool. Then there's the LinkedIn, and then there's other articles. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I sort of stuck with the brand. To the brand guy, I used that name because people said to me, oh, why don't you call yourself the brand consultant or the brand expert or you know, all that shit? And going back to what I was saying earlier on, that the job here is to demystify branding, to make it a human everyday thing, take it off its pedestal, so that's why I call myself the brand guy, you know, and I have the red wine midnight conversation and I'm trying to keep it real. And I've been using the brand guy for about oh, 13 years now. And you just stick to that. It's my Instagram, it's my LinkedIn, it's my, it's my Twitter. And then over, you know, over 11, 12 years, you type it in and, whoosh, and it all comes up, you know, it's, there's nobody else competing for it. It's me, you know, like, want to find me? Yeah, go to the brand guy, you know, it's that easy. And, and I quite, work globally known as a brand guy. That's good. Sometimes people, people like in the media, they, they need a story. They need somebody to come and comment on a branding story or something. <laughs> they just go branding. Oh, the brand guy. Oh, he's the guy. <laughs> they call me out. I don't know who the hell I am. And I go in there. And, oh, the <laughs> and I'll talk about it. And sometimes people say to me, "Was you what, the, the what? Uh, the brand guy? And I go, yeah, well, you know, like there's the Pope and then there's the Dalai Lama. Yeah, well, I am the brand guy. <laughs> <laughs> So people they go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people probably think I'm a bit of a jerk, and I don't care because I, I think that's kind of funny. You know, and some people think it's funny, and then I get to that's, it. That's the way you communicate. Okay? The way I do you it. Know? Love it or hate it. <laughs> you don't like it, then fine. Go to the brand expert. <laughs> because I tell you what, Lucas, everyone's a brand expert. There's a lot of brand experts out there. Yeah. So many of them advising small companies, advising other ones. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I read a few books and I read a book on brand archetypes, you know, and it's like, I can do this. Oh, man. There's too much of that. that. That's why the global rankings is important to me because if there's any doubt, you can look at that and go, okay, he's not one of those guys. You know what I'm saying? So I don't work for a big agency anymore. I don't have that. So just having that little thing to show. That's the only reason. So otherwise, I, I couldn't give a shit. But actually, the new rankings come out, I think, next week. And I'm very scared I'm going to fall off the top 30. <laughs> and my brand will be damaged forever. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't know. Fine, mate. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, that's the boom. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I dropped to number 29. <laughs> So we will see and just 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 let us uh, let us know and so thank you thank you uh, so much Richard for your time and for sharing uh, your 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 knowledge your energy with uh, Polish entrepreneurs marketers and students um, uh, it was really a pleasure to have you here and uh, um, and actually thank you for being a part of Polish branding revolution no, no, that's what that's what I'm doing and this is I'm, I'm delighted to be part of it. You're doing a great job. I'm a big supporter and fan of yours and I thank you very much for including me in your journey. Yeah. Very okay. pleased and to I hope you. hope we can we can we can meet here someday in Poland. Yeah. Okay. And I hope you get to Italy when you want to get to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And bye.